Hey guys, RIU Performance here. Um, I just wanted to make this video because I've been getting a lot of comments on my original video I made. Um, you know, a lot of different questions about if your fuel trims are too high, too low. Uh, same thing with the oxygen sensors. So here I just pulled up a custom um, set of data. So, oh, falling over here. So I got the uh, O2 Bank 1 Sensor 1. O2 bank one sensor two and then O2 bank two sensor one uh, short term fuel trim for bank one and then for bank two so like I stated before you know anything over a positive or negative 10 fuel trim let me uh, scroll down here those are the oxygen sensors okay these are the fuel trims so anything negative or positive 10 or over you want to kind of start to look into it uh you know if you're seven eight you know positive or negative one way or the other it's not the end of the world but anything over 10 you really you know might want to check it out um you know a lot of the questions were if you have uh too high of a um fuel trim one way or the other you know positive if your fuel trim's 10 positive then uh you know it's adding fuel probably you know just a vacuum leak it could be other things but you just want to start with a visual check for vacuum leaks first if the most recent question i got was what if it's uh you know 10 negative or over 10 negative um you know then you want to start being concerned with you know fuel system stuff you know maybe you got a stuck open injector uh is a lot of things that could be but those are the first two things i start with if it's too high positive that means it's adding fuel like i said I, I first always look for vacuum leaks before i test anything else um there is a lot of vacuum lines you know under hoods nowadays especially on newer cars um what we're looking at here is uh a 1996 so you know there's not too too many sensors and everything else in cars like there is nowadays but um you know like i said if you have uh, negative fuel trim that's you know just way too high uh, i would look at you know mainly the injectors uh, usually your fuel trims like you see my right now is just steady uh, 0 0.8 and then for bank two it's uh, 1.6 those are good fuel trim numbers you want to be as close to zero as you absolutely can um and then for the if you have any other questions you know and i didn't cover something in this video or the other video please comment i'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible another question i got was what kind of uh scanner i'm using here um i don't actually know it says sentech on it but i don't know the actual model number this was the first scanner i ever got i just got a uh, bluetooth scanner and if you don't have one of those i really recommend them they're uh, very inexpensive you can plug it right up to your phone or you know make it bluetooth on your phone and uh it's really good for diagnosing stuff you know if you're driving like uh there's a o2 mitsubishi eclipse i work on a lot and um the fuel trims only are bad under acceleration so you know i'm sitting there trying to figure out you know what's going on so i uh you know mounted my phone right on the dash and i could actually look at you know the fuel trims and everything else uh while i was driving so it's very very helpful and they're really inexpensive so definitely something to look into if you do make sure it has uh, the live data capability um but so for oxygen sensors uh they pretty much just tell you you know what's going on with your air to fuel ratio uh pretty much reads the exhaust the amount of exhaust and uh, the air and the fuel in the exhaust so you have one usually like mine right now i have three sensors three oxygen sensors um it pretty much monitors before and after the catalytic converters so you know it's really easy to tell if you have a bad cat um for these you can see the top one right now is at uh 0.7 what well, was 0.750 7 well you get the idea so uh you want it to fluctuate anywhere between 0 0.9 and 0 0.1 uh, there is other scanners, I believe, and uh, other computer systems that read the oxygen sensors a bit differently, but 99% of cars uh, read them this way. It's more than likely yours does too, but you want to see the numbers fluctuating between 0 0.9 
and 0 0.1 uh, millivolts. So right here you can see, uh, and uh, 0.9 is more rich, where point, you know, like the second one right now is 0 0.40, that's lean. So that's uh, after the catalytic converter. So that's a, a good uh, O2 sensor reading. Now the uh, bank two sensor one, that third one on the list down, that's pretty much stuck where it is. I mean, I'm just sitting here idling. The top one is, uh, you know, pretty much the same, but I can't trust my uh, third oxygen sensor right now because I have a major exhaust leak. I'll rev it up a little bit, see if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but uh, you can see it fluctuated right to lean and then rich, lean, rich. It's uh, the first one I'm looking at there fluctuating between you know anywhere from 0 0.7 0 0.8 to you know drop down to 0 0.1 so that's good you pretty much just want to see consistency there uh, in between those numbers if you don't have you know a good oxygen sensor uh, reading those really can't get too messed up depending on what's going on inside the engine but uh, if you know they're flat line, it's a good chance the sensor's just not working, or you have a wiring issue and the sensor's not getting power. A lot of people get confused with that. If you have an oxygen sensor code, there's a lot of different oxygen sensor codes. It might not be the actual oxygen sensor. It could be the heater circuit. Um, a lot of oxygen sensors have heaters in them to help you know get the sem uh, sensor up to temperature, so uh, it runs a little better, warms up quicker. Um, so, you know, that part of the sensor might not be working too, or it could just be the wiring going to that heater or the wiring just going to the sensor itself. So there's a lot of different things you gotta look at there. You don't wanna just go throwing parts at it. Um, if you do have any of those codes, you know, you can't figure it out. Um, you know, best thing to do is uh, get yourself, um, you know, some kind of like power probe or a uh, test light or something. Just make sure you're getting voltage with the key on. You gotta be careful doing electrical work though, you know, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Easiest, you know, with oxygen sensors, a lot of people just replace them because they are really cheap. Um, so, but I just don't like to throw parts at stuff. You know, it's not good to do. I like to actually diagnose and know for sure that, you know, the part I'm replacing is the part that's bad on the vehicle. So, um, you know, you just want to make sure your oxygen sensor numbers are consistent. Um, right now, I actually uh, am pretty happy with all these readings. It could be a little bit better, but, you know, my car's, uh, the car I'm in right now is from 1996. It's got 262,000 miles on it right now. Still runs really good, by the way. But, um, you know, it just proves, you know, if you take care of something good enough, it does last, so... But, uh, you know, if you if there's nothing, or if there's anything I didn't cover in this video or the other video, uh, please let me know, comment, you know, just ask me, you know, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I just wanted to make this, like I said, because there's a lot of questions, and I did leave out a decent amount of information. One more thing, before you take these numbers, uh, the, the readings, make sure your car is fully warmed up, take it for a drive, you know, don't let it just warm up idling. It'll, you know, probably take forever, but your oxygen sensors have to reach a certain temperature before you'll get accurate readings because uh, there's what's called open and closed loop, and uh, the car has to warm up before it'll take uh, all the sensors and use that information to adjust your air-to-fuel ratio, where when you just first start the car, the ECU just has a preset number for your air-to-fuel ratio, so it'll just keep it at that. Once it's warmed up, um, you know, it takes all the oxygen sensors, fuel trims, uh, your map sensor, airflow sensor, if you have a mass airflow sensor, and it adjusts the uh, mixture accordingly. But um, that's another thing if you have, uh, you know, uh, oxygen sensors and, you know, they're reading off, you know, bad numbers or something like that, or fuel trims, uh, you, you could just have a bad sensor, but more than likely, um, you know, there's something else going on. It's either fuel or, uh, you know, vacuum leak. 99% of the time when someone comes to me, though, and has me read uh, their fuel trims for them and they're positive, 99% of the time they have a uh, just a, a giant vacuum leak or, you know, something's disconnected. So definitely look at, you know, for vacuum leaks. It's not good anyway if it's after your mass airflow sensor. 
you don't have a mass airflow sensor, it meters it by the uh, MAP sensor. But if you do have a mass airflow, anything after the mass airflow sensor that you know has a hole in it or a ripped hose or anything like that, uh, that's not good because that's air that's not accounted for. So it's not going to be putting in the right amount of fuel. So I hope this uh, is helpful. Uh, all I want to do is you know just try to help people out. Uh, you know I know labor rates are expensive, very, very expensive, and nobody likes to take their car to a shop, especially if you can fix it yourself. That's how I started out. I just, you know, didn't really want anybody else touching my car. I wanted to know it was done the right way, so uh, that's how I got into it, but it takes a lot of time and patience, so, but, uh, you know, like I said, if this video is helpful, if you have any other additional questions, uh, just feel free to send me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you uh, like the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, you know, just let me know, uh, I'm doing something right, so, thank you for watching, I really appreciate your views, especially on my other video, you know, it's not a whole lot of views or a whole lot of subscribers, but I really appreciate every single view and every single subscriber, and, um, I'll be making more update videos soon, I'll show you more of my, uh, Bluetooth scanner, I really recommend those, but, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time I post a video.